If you like this video, please visit www.mercuryphoenixtrust.com to learn more about Queen and Freddie Mercury and their legacy. Freddie Mercury, the flamboyant, charismatic lead singer of rock band Queen, was born Farouk Bulsara on September 5, 1946, in what is now known as Tanzania. When he was just eight years old, his parents sent him to a private school in India, where he first earned the nickname Bucky and then Freddie, which stuck. When he was 17, the entire Bulsara family fled Tanzania and moved to England, where Mercury enrolled at Ealing College of Art. It was there that the young Freddie met bassist Tim Staffel, who had formed a band with guitarist and astrophysicist in training Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor. In 1969, the trio, named Smile, were searching for a lead singer, when Staffel introduced Freddie Bulsara to the group. At that time I had long hair and black fingernails and makeup and everything. I actually laugh at myself, but I know that it was something that you had to do. It was relevant at the time. Already seen as eccentric, Freddie had big, novel ideas for growing a following, all of which focused on performance, style, and of course, on his powerful, four-octave voice. By 1970, Freddie May and Taylor were sharing an apartment and Staffel had left the band. It was at that time that Mercury became Freddie Mercury, naming himself after the Roman god and christened the band Queen. In the early 70s, while working at a clothes stall, Mercury met Mary Austin, with whom he would begin a romantic relationship that would last seven years and a friendship that would last a lifetime. In 1973, Queen released its debut album, Queen. Two more albums followed in 1974. Mercury was slowly building up a following and bonding with his audience through his theatrical, over-the-top performances. In 1975, the band started work on their fourth studio production, A Night at the Opera. Mercury presented the band with his idea for a complicated opus that would meld opera and rock. came in a beat later. <laughs> no, you didn't shout one or anything. You I know, I shouted one and came in myself later. The final work, Bohemian Rhapsody, was Queen's first number one single in the UK and made it into the top 10 of the American charts. While many of Queen's biggest hits were written by Mercury, Queen's fifth album would spawn hits by other members of the band. Not two of us are, are the same. You know, we all like totally different things. It's a chemistry that, that works. And I couldn't tell you what it was. Who can? It's just something that, that seems to fit. And that's what good bands are made of, you know? And we're good. News of the World featured the rock-heavy stadium anthem staples We Will Rock You, written by Brian May, and We Are the Champions, written by Mercury. By this point, the band had become synonymous with, and criticized for, their bombastic commercial sound. However, in the five years that followed the release of A Night at the Opera, Queen achieved massive success. From my point of view, I mean, as far as the writing side of it was concerned, I really thought, I said, okay, Bohemian Rhapsody, big hit. But as far as my writing abilities were concerned, I think I could write better anyway. A song like Somebody to Love is, in my estimation, a better sort of, uh, from the writing aspect, a better song. Mercury's personal life, however, was in turmoil. His relationship with Mary Austin ended after he confessed to her that he was gay. She moved out of the home they shared into one he purchased for her. Mercury celebrated his singledom with constant partying accompanied by numerous lovers. The band also courted its share of controversy by touring in countries embroiled in political turmoil, such as Argentina and South Africa. I don't wanna... Actually, I won't mention names. Rod Stewart and Queen and people like that have played there. They're jerks for doing it, and uh, 
they, were, they were more than aware of what they were doing, and I think that they should be uh, called out for it. Welcome to South Africa. Well, it's, nice. it's very nice to be here in South Africa, and I just want, want to have a good time. Despite a slew of hits that reached into the 80s, including Another One Bites the Dust and Under Pressure with David Bowie, Fans turned their backs on the band due to the political controversies and Mercury's open homosexuality. Another one bites the dust. Mercury was deeply hurt when the band wasn't invited to participate in Bob Geldof's Band Aid charity recording of Do They Know It's Christmas. It appears Geldof had softened a bit toward the band when he invited Queen to perform at July 1985's Live Aid London concert. Despite playing on a roster that included some of rock's most famous artists, including Paul McCartney, U2, and Elton John, Queen stole the show. By the following year, they were playing in front of crowds of over 200,000 fans. By this time, due to the AIDS epidemic, Mercury had considerably slowed his partying ways. But I've stopped all that because I mean practicality came into it. You know, and I'm, all, I'm, I'm also an old bird now, dear. And I don't, I don't miss it. I really don't. However, it was too late. In 1987, he learned he had contracted the deadly disease. If I'm still alive, I will come back. You know? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Following the diagnosis, Mercury, who despite his preening stage persona was a deeply private person, became a recluse, not wanting to be remembered as frail or sickly, but as the athletic, magnetic man last seen on the stage. Mercury spent the final years of his life denying he had AIDS until the evening of November 23, 1991, when he released a statement confirming the rumors. Years of unconfirmed rumors, singer Freddie Mercury of Queen announced on Saturday that he had in fact contracted AIDS and that while he previously kept that information from the press, he now urged people around the world to unite in fighting what he called He this died the disease. very next day. Freddie Mercury was 45 years old. I don't have any aspirations to live to 70, really. And I don't, don't sound sort of um, morbid. 70 is a long way away, and I don't give a damn. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I really, I have lived a full life. And if I'm dead tomorrow, I don't give a damn. He left the bulk of his estate and his mansion to Mary Austin. He also left her with his cremated ashes, with a request that she bury them in a secret place away from prying eyes. To this day, Freddie Mercury's final resting place is unknown, and Austin has sworn that she will never reveal its location. I love the fact that I, that I, um, I make people happy. If it's half an hour of their lives in any way that I can, I, I can make them feel lucky or, or make them feel, or, or bring a smile on a sour face, that to me is, is worthwhile. In life, Freddie Mercury was a talented, visionary artist who found the courage to live life on his terms, both on stage and off. In death, his legend has only grown and his legacy has helped save countless lives around the world, while his voice will live forever in the countless amazing recordings he left behind.